I got it. Don't worry about it. Oh, I try to be helpful. Well, you have all the notes and shit. You spit so. my eye. Yeah. I'm trying to... You have enough things on your plate. Right? <laughs> Please stand by, starting soon. Right? No, that's what it says. No, it'll refresh. Don't worry. Okay. See, and I got a quiz and everything. Man, this is going to be glorious. Ooh, Twitter. Wonder who that could be. It's probably me. It is. And it's probably in Spanish. Let's double check here. Because that is how things are going. Because I haven't figured out how to fix the non Spanish thing. Tu eres más apretado que un culo de delfín. I do not understand Spanish. <laughs> That's apparently what it is. No, it's not. It's, it's not it? even close to it. No, it's it's in English. It's oh, fine. okay. Okay. I don't know why the Department of Defense went up in Spanish. It didn't make any sense to me. I know. I think I still have it. <laughs> oh, I better have this on mute. Yes. No, I got that. Too. Okay. Uh, what is the delay? See, I'm like watching me just fidget all over the place. It's ridiculous. All right. Are you talking about the definition? Uh, it goes up to 720 HP for me. It just does not seem quite clear. All right, you don't worry about the chat. I got the chat. All right, that's fine. All I'm right. just watching. no. I, I know. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just watching us kind of live. Don't want distractions and whatnot that we can avoid. All right. Oh, that's not super terrible. All right. Chat is going. I think we are ready. glass this show is dedicated to helping you make the best beer possible so scrap in and hold on to your mash tons we're homebrew bound welcome to homebrew bound i'm casey and i'm miles and this is the best beer show on the internet You're well, darn least, right. according to our mothers <laughs> So, Miles, what have you been doing brew-wise? Ah, uh, not too much. Not as nearly as much as I want to. Uh, maybe after payday, I can finally start affording it again. Yay, payday. Payday, payday is the best. Payday, you know, pay I'm doing after payday this week. Getting drunk. No, I got to get my suit taken in. <laughs> oh, sad story. Well, actually, it's, it is and it isn't. Like, it's good because, hey, lost weight. Need to get suit fixed. <laughs> And Not good because you know have to go get suit fixed, right? Double edged sword there. Yeah. So, um, this is a little different. We're doing it live. We got the studio lights on. It's bright. I should be wearing sunglasses. We right? got camera angles and things. And you know what? I even decided to wear a homebrew appropriate shirt. I did not see that. Oh yes, big old hop cone. Oh, you know what? I did brewing related. I went to uh, Maple Island Brewing Company this week. And I uh, want to revisit it in the future okay. to see if they have improved upon a few things. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to say anything negative. It was their opening weekend or something this weekend. Sure. And I'm just gonna say I found a few easily fixable issues with their beer. So I'm hoping once they get used to the system and everything, that those things will iron themselves out. And I'd really like to revisit it again in the future. Well, right on. Uh, where is where is this? Uh, it's actually in Stillwater. It's right downtown. Um, it's uh, it, it's right on the water. Beautiful location. Just absolutely gorgeous facility. And they have this... I don't know if you've ever seen this. So there's no, uh, there's no sinks in the bathroom. Interesting. Right? 
the sink it's a shared sink for both bathrooms outside but it's not actually a sink it's like a slab of like granite or marble that's angled and then it just and it water drains falls water it, ro- into your yeah hands. yeah waterfalls like to the back so like there's some faucets but like the it it just slants back so it's not like the traditional like bowl sink and so everyone's like hanging out into the sink rubbing elbows it's actually kind of cool you know I don't, I don't know if I'm a fan of that I like, don't know it's better than I don't, I don't know at least you have something no it's true I'm just it seems a little ah something is making noises and I'm not really sure what it is uh, it's not me I'm muted over here oh it's this madness here what are you what are you doing over there ah <sighs> See, I was prepared. I've been waiting for this guy for 15 minutes. No, so I'm prepared, but I think I have the uh, the video opened in multiple things, and it re... Yeah, all right. Okay. We should be good now. We should be okay. I think. Talk about something. Talk, talk about something. Okay, so I think it's either a good or a bad sign that you think there's potential in this new Stillwater place. Uh, if you think that one may need to fix a few right. things, but... I got I get live feed. There's some issues there, but yeah. So no, I I think it they it, there's definitely potential there, and I'm curious to see what they will do. Fair if enough. That makes sense. Uh, there they have you know, they have some interesting concepts for beers that I wanted to, that I think if done if they fix the small issues will be really good. Okay, so far you've done nothing but speak in generalities. Can you give me at least one example of one of their beers? I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to be nice, but I had to talk about it. Uh, you know, let me bring them. Bring it up here quick. Uh, it's uh, Maple Island Brewing. Oh, this is wonderful radio right here. Right. No, it's. I don't know. All right. So uh, the ones that I, well, I had, I had everything they offered. So. That explains a few things. They, well, they they have they. <laughs> I, I did a flight of five. Sure. Because so they had they had six beers. The flight the flights have five. Seems like you should just increase the flight by one, so you can somebody can try all the beers. But anyway, uh, I really liked uh, the bearded lady IPA was pretty good. Um, it wasn't quite hoppy enough for to be considered an IPA. I think it was more of a pale ale, but it was it was good. The uh, the Dragon's Breath Kolsch was okay, and the peel, their wit beer, the the Peel Me Wit, was fantastic. That okay. one, I really don't have anything bad to say about it. I really liked it. The spices really came through, and it was it was very well spiced beer. Sounds like I should give them a chance myself. Yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely worth the trip, especially like just downtown Stillwater is gorgeous. Uh, I mean, it'll be a little chilly this time of year, but <laughs> in the spring, for sure. Well, it just means you have to have a little something to help warm up. Yes, which, you know, six beers helped. Plus, we had just come from the uh, Pitchfork uh, Harvest Festival. You go there way too often. Yeah, but it was the Harvest Festival, <laughs> and so I got a nifty mug. No, and see, now I just need to give you a hard time because I didn't get to go, and now I'm jealous. Uh, you were totally invited to go. I didn't say I wasn't invited. I just said I couldn't go. <laughs> I'm just saying there's nobody to blame here but you. Yeah. Uh... I know. All right. So let's actually talk about some beer here. Uh, yes. I'm not. We didn't really discuss how we wanted to do it, but let's start with tasting this homebrew. Okay. Should we do that? Might as well. Um, all right. You're, you want to start trying to figure out how to pour this thing, and I'll tell you a little bit about this beer? Uh, yeah, I'm going to push them. Do you want to give me something to open these with? Yes. Take one of the six bottle openers sitting in front of you. All right. Uh, so this beer is... Planning. <laughs> This beer is actually a little special to me. It's my first ever homebrew. That's right. This is a three-year-old beer. It is an extract. Uh, oh, you want this to actually pour beer? That makes sense. I figured you would pour yours and hand me the bottle. Uh, it's it's an extract beer, and it's a hefeweizen, which happens to be the topic of the show today. And we'll get into that in just a little bit here. Um, it's three years old, so it is crystal clear, which is automatically a hit against it because half of Eisen. Um Okay, there you go. Cloud that up a bit. Uh, Miles just shook the bottle for those of you guys not watching at home. Um, it immediately earns a point or two back. <laughs> right? Well, it's I, I hate a clear half. 
it's just wrong. But it's not clear anymore, but the carbonation has some serious issues it, going on here. It's doing something. Again, three years old, first batch. I'm surprised the bottles haven't, like, I'm surprised that there's still carbonation, to be honest. No, um, it, it had the proper amount of hiss as, as soon as I opened it up. I, if, and it didn't uh, gush? No, it didn't. Um, there's no head retention anymore. No. The carbonation is I don't know. very, very coarse. I got some head going. Mine went away. Yes. But, oh, well, and this will be kind of fun because we have one of my latest beers, the double IPA from earlier this year, yep. against my first beer. So We'll see how far you have come. Right, or how far I haven't come. <laughs> I suppose. All right. So uh, I will tell the story behind this beer while you taste quick. Sir, yes, sir. All right. So this is how I got into brewing, really. Uh, I I ordered the, uh, the Hefeweizen kit from oh that was not a good face that was not a good face at all i need something to write on um okay I, I got you got it, it. all I right it. Yep. from midwest supplies i ordered this kit with all of their things and i don't know i follow the instructions to the letter <laughs> because that's what you do when you're initially brewing now he's just working on passing blame <laughs> <laughs> no no th honestly if this beer is bad I I don't think it's anybody's fault at this point. <laughs> no, probably it's, not. It's a three-year-old Hefeweizen. Hefeweizen should not be three years old. I'm, I'm expecting oxidation. I'm expecting maybe some sort of infection from the bottle. I don't know if my sanitation practices were quite up to snuff at that point. Uh, given the fact that it hissed properly when I opened the bottle, that would give points to the sanitation level. Yes, but it could end up, uh, there could have been something where it could be cidery now or something like that. And Ooh, there we go. Is that the word you were looking for? It helps. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, and we didn't we didn't have the best practices when we were first starting out. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a lot of issues with this beer, uh, especially it being three years old. So where are you at so far on the taste, if I don't mind? Cidery. Cidery? Are you cidery? No, I give it a try. Okay, so I hate to knock it, but for everything that it is, including your first beer plus extract plus three years old, there's not much good to say about this. No. Uh, you can drink it, kind of. Kind of. There's a little bit of those notes there, the yeasty notes, but not much. Yeah, but it's all like the, the spiciness meets coarse carbonation mm -hmm. meets this kind of cidery, slightly oxidized setup to just give you something that you can you could drink if you had no other options, but if there's yep. anything else there, you'd take that instead. Yeah, it's 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 a little sweet. It's cidery. It went downhill. Oh, yeah. Well, it was never stellar to begin with. <laughs> I, there's, there's no ifs, ands, but this was not a stellar beer to begin with. Okay. It was average. Very, very it, average. It's it's your first homebrew, so sure. it's it's always built up a little bit. I had no I had no qualms. With it. I'm like, yeah, it's drinkable, and it's beer that I made. So let's go it, for it. It goes up five points, uh, but in your own head at least. Yeah, yeah. But going from this first beer to this double IPA setting in front of us, which we've tasted on an earlier episode of this show, and then we've tasted several other times. We just haven't talked about it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a night and day difference from just the crafted quality of the beer. I think it even comes through that um, this is all grain and the other one is extract. I think I can taste the extract qualities in the half. You think so? I, I do. It just comes off as two-dimensional. Yeah. Yeah, well, that could also be oxidation as well. No, I, I and, know. But yeah, no, and dry yeast doesn't help with that. Yeah, I know. All right. Well, that was actually kind of fun. It it was. It was fun. A little a little nostalgia. Yeah. Well, that's okay. I have I have a couple more old beers up there. Um, Are we gonna save that last one for episode or episode next year? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's gonna sit there. Uh, I think I still have like a Smash Pale Ale up there that's two years old, and I have that's like one of my I think my third all grain batch, and then I have. I don't know, what I do is, like, I'll occasionally just bottle six or 12 of a batch and just stick them somewhere and forget about them for a while. <laughs> and then we have this. You know what? All, or, getting into all-grain brewing and waiting on fermentation times, you learn 
patience. It's it's ridiculous. Like mm-hmm. I can have beer that I know I want to save, just set it away in the refrigerator, and then it's nothing for me to let it sit for six months. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to tell. I can't believe I forgot this. It was such a big event for me this past week. I had to dump my first batch of beer. What? Well, all right, half batch. Okay. I had to dump half a batch of beer. I did. I well, I had that Blondale yep. sitting in the corner for four months, six, four, four months. And we'll just call it five. Yeah, five months. <laughs> and uh, the fermenter uh, must have gotten jostled or something, and uh, the lid wasn't on. Oh and no! And so that that level that that layer of CO two that's usually there was not there. was not there, and it got a little funky. Not gonna lie. Funky good or funky funky bad? bad. It was <laughs> it was it was a little vinegary and very cidery. Okay. Um. I mean it, and it it just smelled off, and I immediately knew, like, and it wasn't like the right color, and <laughs> I was like, well, crap. <laughs> so that one went out into the backyard to fertilize the lawn, and then I opened up the second one, and I'm just ready for just disappointment, <laughs> and it actually turned out really well okay um it's in kegs right now i'm hoping to get it carved maybe for next week okay uh we'll see so yeah that that was that was my just apps i had never dumped anything before i've dumped we've probably dumped somewhere between 20 and 30 gallons well i've dumped five the worst was a stuck sparge oh i remember that story i spent three hours trying to fix it and then said screw it oh i dumped it in the street washed my sticky hands and just went home (laughs) (laughs) all right so uh we have a new segment this week and that will kind of drive right into our discussion this week uh listener email yes we had a listener send in a question Uh, i responded to him directly and i figured we could uh bring it up and we'll talk about it a little bit uh, and we'll definitely talk about it more in depth once we get to the discussion. Yes, yep. Uh, so, uh, should I read his name? I don't know if I should read the names on air. Well, or... uh, just give a first name. Oh, yeah, all right. So, uh, Cody uh, emailed in. Uh, hey, uh, newish brew- home brewer here. I just wanted to tell you that I'm a big fan of the show. Why, well, thank you, Cody. Thank you. Uh, and he's making his first all-grain Hefeweizen this weekend. Uh, he's He had a new fly sparge set up that he was dying to use. So he wanted to know if we have any advice, and then he wanted us to read things on the air, which we're doing. So yeah, this this segment, it's all for you, Cody. Yep. All right, uh, so I sent him some advice. You read it. Uh, do you want to give yours before I give mine? Uh, why don't you go yours? Uh, okay. Because mine is basically all included in the discussion we have. All right. Okay, perfect. Uh, so my tips for giving or for brewing a half of bison. Pro tips, mind you. Pro tips, yes. Uh, this is not. <laughs> <laughs> Pro tip: Don't be Casey making a heffy <laughs> for my first beer. All right. Uh, <laughs> anyway, let's see. Uh, yeah, tips. Uh, the most common error that I see with uh, half of bison's is with the yeast pitch. Yeah. Um, I, I see a lot of clear half of bison's, which is a big pet peeve of mine. It. A wheat beer should not be crystal clear. I should not be able to see through a wheat beer. Agreed. It needs to be nice and hazy. So I said uh, to almost over pitch. Like, if you're worried about over pitching, you're not pitching quite enough. Is essentially what it boiled down to. Yeah. You really just want to get a really good active yeast pitch in there. And then uh, I like to start my uh, half of Eisen's lower in like the 62, 63 range. And then over the course of a few days, bump them up into the low 70s, 73, 74. You mean for fermentation? For right? fermentation, okay. yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's that's so your initial ferment is nice and clean. And then towards the end, you'll get those nice banana clove, but it's not going to be overwhelming. You're not going to get the hot alcohols. Sure. Uh, if I was going to toss any uh, pro tips out there, as far as your new sparge, your fly sparge goes, um, do your best to make sure you're not losing heat while you're fly sparging. That's about the biggest problem that you might run into doing that. Um, I'm not sure what your setup is, but if it's uh, like you got to open the lid and then you're you're dumping or you're putting your water on top, uh, I'd say do it in bursts. You know, let it go down a little bit, fill it back up with your fly sparge so you can cover it and try and maintain as much heat as you can. 
Otherwise, you might be losing as much heat as you're trying to put back in or even more and just kind of okay. lose some efficiency that way as well. Uh, if you can or if you already have a closed system for a fly sparge, um, more power to you. All right. And I did receive another email today. Oh, you did? I awesome. Did. <laughs> uh, he, he told me how the brew went. And oh, from Cody. Yeah. Awesome. And I was just, I was, I'm this, this is so much fun. It, it's this actually very, of, I feel like we're very gushy right now. No, this, this is, is this fun. is exciting. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, he hit all of his numbers. Awesome. Um, and he's starting the ferment at a lower temperature, which awesome. Hey, thank you for taking my advice. And he also, uh, made sure he did a really good yeast pitch. He was, he was actually, uh, brewing a beer with one of his friends and he let her pitch the yeast. So it's, I guess her beer now. Oh right? yes, and this this made me really really jealous. Uh, they hit all their numbers, and they they were watching the fly sparge while eating crabs. I know, right? Where are my crabs? I know. <laughs> all right, I gotta leave that one alone. <laughs> right? It, that was too much of a softball. Yeah, you can't hit that one. I can't. I can't. I would have. <laughs> I know, I know. Department right. of Offense would have been all Oh, well, it. then I would have expected you to. <laughs> okay, uh, so why don't we just get right into our quiz then? Yeah, I would love to hear how badly I can script this quiz. Yes. Right, okay. So um, I, this quiz is going to be all about a specific beer style. Guess what? It's going to be the Hefeweizen. So is this the Hefeweizen show? It might as well be. Hefeweizen user. This you know. still kind of smells like a Hefeweizen. I'm not going to lie. The I, aroma's still there. My, it's I'm, not I'm as... a little stuffed up. I couldn't get much, but... Okay. I got some or, phenols. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a closer look at a homebrew style, the Hefeweizen. And then in parentheses, all like right. <laughs> uh, so, Casey, what are the vital statistics Statistics of a BJCP Hefeweizen. Of a BJCP Hefeweizen? Yes, I want those stats. Oh, man. Okay. So uh, I'll just I'll feed them to you. Original gravity. Uh, you want your... I, I believe it's a 1050, 1060 beer. Uh, 1050 would be more appropriate. 44 to 52. Okay. Uh, final gravity. Final gravity um, between 10... 10 and probably 10 5 you want it well not no probably 10 10 to 10 15 10 10 to 10 14 oh you're, it's close you're doing good you're doing good ibus this IBUs, is a thing that people don't think about too much uh probably 10 to maybe 30 8 to 15 8 to 15 okay yep. so i was a little on the high side a little on the high side uh color srm uh, SRM. Uh, you want it to be in that straw, like oh, Pale straw, gold, golden, golden. Um, so that's like three to eight. Two to eight. Ah, oh! ah, he's doing, he's doing well. Without having these in front of me, I feel like I'm doing pretty damn well. Guys. Yes. Uh, ABV. ABV. Um, to the tenth. To the tenth. Uh, let's see. I like mine right around five. So I'm going to say probably the range is four and a half to seven. Four, three to five, six. Oh, okay. Uh, you're saying that, that you like it around wide. five is, is right in the middle there. Yeah. So, yeah, no, okay. So you obviously know what you're talking about at least. Uh, so tell me, what are the main char characteristics of a Hefeweizen? And again, I'll feed them to you. This right. is primarily out of the BJCP. And then these are the primary I characteristics. I haven't read the guidelines. In so no, that, long. that's this fine. Is be. Um, I'm right. just telling everybody where I'm getting my info. Yep. Uh, so the aroma, what do we expect in the aroma? In the aroma, you want um, a lot of yeast characteristics. You want uh, banana, clove. Um, yes. You want it to be just a little sweet to the smell, I think. Uh, yeah. Moderate to strong banana and clove. That's like the one thing that has to be there. Yeah. It, you, you needs it. And and so for, for this question, we're talking about the absolute has to have it. Okay. Uh, appearance. Uh, that straw, gold, uh, maybe a little darker, uh, hazy. You want a big, thick, white head on it that sticks around for a while. Good lacing. Yeah, that was mostly it. Uh, pale to straw, golden color. And this is their word. A moosey, long-lasting head. Yeah, that's that's a per. You want like, you want to be able to like scoop that up and put it in an ice cream. Yeah, cone. pretty much. And then unfiltered and hazy. All right. 
Yep. Uh, flavor. Uh, your flavor is the, I, that yeast character is going to come through that banana clove, and that's the big, big thing. Yep, it's it's the same as the aroma. Aroma: lotus, strong banana and clove plus esters. Mm -hmm. And then mouthfeel. Give it to me. I'm mouthfeel's the one thing I'm not good at, man. Uh, it's because you always need everything dry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I like I like dry, but this is not dry. This is I mean you're you're in that medium range. Yep. Where medium know, body. Yeah. And then uh, it says uh, fluffy, creamy fullness, so it needs to be you know silky kind of to mm -hmm. the touch, uh, effervescent and high carbonation. Hey, I got the high carbonation part right. <laughs> <laughs> right. But you took the effervescent a little too high. <laughs> you back off my effervescence. <laughs> right. Okay, and now uh, this next question is, uh, we're going to go through the same characteristics, uh, but I want you to talk about some of the secondary characteristics that can be, you know, up or down, this or that. Some of the second... Uh, so, I'll, I'll give you the first one. For the aroma, uh, you can also have a noble hop characteristic, just a little bit, uh, citrus tartness, some vanilla, and some bubblegum. Okay. So those are so some, more of the yeast character. Yeah. So those are some secondary and things that can be that there can if you want to, etc. Okay. Appearance. I, I think we pretty much there's there's three things. There is no variability. There is yeah. There's it's that's just how it looks. You yes. can't you can't go around that too much. No, that's fine. Uh, flavor. The flavor. Uh, you can have the hops come through a little bit. Yes, you can. Uh, and then again, same thing with the aroma. Any of those characteristics can come through in the flavor. The one thing you really, really just do not want is any of that alcohol to come through whatsoever. Absolutely. If you if you have any alcohol coming through in this style, you're it's the wrong. It's just a bad year. Yep. Uh, about the only thing that's included in the flavor that's not in the aroma, uh, a vanilla flavor. Okay. Very light. Uh, not supposed to be prominent. I can uh, see that. But then it also says bubblegum, hop flavor, yep. and then some citrus. Pro tip, do not add vanilla to your half of Eisen. Yes, thank you. All right. So... But I, maybe we should talk about the BJACP guidelines. Just I just quick. This is this is a kind of a pet peeve of mine. I don't okay. know if you've noticed uh, this at all. We got one more here, and then okay, we'll go. Okay, okay, go. Mouthfeel, mouthfeel. Uh, I guess it could be a little chewier. No, no a little no, thinner. No, no variability. No variability. Yeah. <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right. So with the BJACP, you'll see things like vanilla as a flavor descriptor, or uh, like the big thing that gets me is Citrus. Scottish ale. Where you'll see slight smoky or uh, like with uh, English ales, I don't know if it's still there, but they used to have some characteristics that were more characteristics of oxygenization coming from the tr the trip over than the actual beer itself. Yeah. Don't add stuff to your beer just because a flavor descriptor is there. Like if something says, "Oh, this can be a little tart," just don't don't start throwing lactobacillus in it. No, it, don't don't throw vanilla in your half of ice. And what it's talking about is these is off flavors. Uh, off flavor is not as good or bad, but just as things that can come from either the grain or from fermentation yeah. or from yeast, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, not primary, basically. Yeah. So just don't don't start throwing crap into your beer just to try to hit the style guideline. Okay. And then uh, for our listener, I wanted you to give me an overview of the traditional German ingredient makeup for a Hefeweizen. Um, it, it's actually mine, pretty, pretty yeah, straightforward. Mine is uh, like 50% wheat, 50% pills, and some noble hop, just enough to hit my numbers. And Weizen ale yeast? Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's super it. super simple. Uh, German says it has to be at least 50% mm -hmm. wheat. I don't like doing over 50% wheat, because some, of some styles mash. go up to seventy. Yeah, but I, no. I, I personally just don't like mashing with that. No, it's true. It's a, it's a pain in the yeah. uh, backside. Uh, okay, so let's talk about mashing methods for a hefeweizen. What are some of the suggested suggested methods for making one? All of the rice hulls. Right. <laughs> now, in addition to all of the rice hulls, um, you're what gonna do we got. Uh, you're gonna mash in that mid range. Not, you know, because you want a medium body, so you're not going to mash super low or super high. You'll be right in, like, I'd say 153, 4 range for your mash temp. He's good. 
Uh, for a single infuse, you want to be right in between 150 and 154. Uh, the range being uh, those that set of numbers for higher gravity, you want to mash at the lower end. And for mm-hmm. lower gravity, you want to mash at the higher end just to kind of kind of try and balance out the conversation between sweet and strong. Yeah. <clears throat> and then if we weren't going to do a single infusion, what would the traditional German brewer do? We've talked about it two or three times now. I know. I don't listen to you, Miles. Right. Uh, <laughs> what would the traditional German brewer do? He would probably do some sort of decoction because he's using that, that Pilsner exactly malt. Yep. And that has, like, traditional German pills has issues with conversions and whatnot and so you need to do that decoction and then historically also modification yeah that's Um, the word i was looking for yep uh because of the modification and then just the high amount of adjuncts uh so you would do a decoction mash uh historically with a protein rest between 120 and 130 for 20 to 30 minutes Uh um you can also do a rest at 130 to 134 for 20 to 30 minutes and that can aid in head retention yeah there you go Cool you learn something new. Yeah. All right. And then the last uh, last question I got for you here is tell me about fermentation temperatures. So fermentation temperatures, mine might be a little different than what the BJCP says because I have a very distinct way I like my half vices to taste. The BJCP doesn't give nearly as much information on fermentation as you might want. Yeah, they just kind of give the range, don't they? So no, they're just like, you know. I suppose they focus more on, yeah. Yeah. All right. They, they really anyway, so for fermentation with with something like this, when you want those yeast characters, and this goes with, I mean, I use it primarily with Hefeweizen because I brew that more than I would a like a Belgian. But mm-hmm. I say this works for Belgians as well. When you want those yeast characters to come through, but you don't want them to be overwhelming. Uh, a lot of people will just pitch and start high and stay high, like around 68, 70. I like to start low because it just eases the yeast into it. Sure. And then you, I feel like you get a better, you get a better, cleaner beer uh, initially, and then you get those esters on top instead of just all esters all the time. Yes. Um, so what I have is uh, ferment at the lower, and then actually bring it up to seventy. That's a, that agrees with a lot of the research I've done. Uh, and then also do not under pitch. Yeah. Uh, that, well, that's a very, yeah. very big thing. Any any beer where you want a lot of yeast character and you want it to be cloudy, be on the verge of overpitching. It's it's really hard on the humber side to overpitch your beer. And then you might not like this, but uh, for those who really want to uh, step outside the normal bounds for a recipe, if you don't want to use a hef or like a straight Bavarian Hefeweizen yeast strain, you can take you know, like a normal wheat beer yeast strain and ferment at higher temperatures to get extra phenolic yeah. character. Yeah, no, I, I'm fine with that. Um, actually, that what's that stupid yeast that we've been using that I, that you've been using that I hate? USO5? I think that would be a decent half yeast. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, no, it's... <laughs> Just using an American dry yeast for a German Hefeweizen. Yeah, but that's what it tastes like. Uh, either it has a lot of like, those fruity characters. Like, well, I guess it's it's more it's Belgian very, than... Yeah, uh, I would say but, use it more than a, or more for a Belgian, but I'd be interested to see how well it plays. You would end up with a Belgian wheat instead of a, a German A spurament. A spurament. Well, you got to do the first experiment. Right? It's in the fridge. Yet. <laughs> I blame you. I I blame me, too. I was going to do it this weekend, but I got hung over. How well did that play out? It was awesome when I woke up. And I was like, <laughs> I overslept by three hours. Oops. Where is the Advil? <laughs> right? No, that was, at that point, it was like, well, it's time to roll over and go back to bed. <laughs> it's too late. Skipping class. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, do we have anything else to uh, talk about, really? Or uh, I would just add that I'm sorry it's after the fact for you, Cody. Um, at least. Well, I, 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 I got to him before he brewed. Yes. No, I'm... but uh, for this show. But I hope this helps uh, helps you to improve your beer in the future as well. So. Yeah. I, w- I mean, if you if you want, if you know, you feel inclined to send us a bottle uh <laughs> shoot me an email and i'll get you an address i like how we'll you tried it. so hard to make it sound like you weren't begging <laughs> <laughs> all right uh and that goes for anybody else if you have any questions comments uh or just you want to talk to us at all 
Uh, we're going to try to be doing this live every Monday. I think that should be a good time uh, for us to at least it's good for us to get together and we'll try to do it about eight central every every week. So, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. If you want to listen live, hop in the chat and ask your questions there. Are or if there... you have any beer that you want us to try and critique uh, and you're in the area or you want to send it in again, just send an email to uh, either to feedback at blindindustudios.com, the ninja. Just send something to blindindustudios.com and we'll get it. But feedback at blindindustudios.com would be the best way to get a hold of us. Sure. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to play some outro music. Is this the show that I have the terrible outro music on? or is No, it... I, I like it. We talked about it. It was a whole discussion. I know. Well, there's a lot of discussions that I have. Oh, yeah. I like this one. Yeah. No, this is the one. Okay. It's Console Cowboys. I have the bad one on. <laughs> And I play it every week because I keep forgetting. You had me wondering. I was listening for the first two seconds like, is this the right one? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, if you want to support this show or any of the other programming here on the Blind Ninja Studios Network, go ahead and head on over to Amazon. Or, well, first hit our hit our homepage and click on the Amazon link at the bottom of the page. Then do your regular Amazon shopping. And Amazon gives us a little kickback. Or if you want to support us more directly, head on over to patreon.com slash Studios. Or, again, go to our homepage, click on the patron link at the bottom of the page. Uh, you guys get a little uh, incentive thing down there, so check that out. But, yeah, even as little as dollar a month helps a lot. So yeah. go check that out, guys. And if you have any feedback, questions, whatnot, go ahead and send us an email at feedback at blindestudios.com. Or you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash blindestudios. Or follow us on Twitter at blind underscore ninja. And we'll and see I'll you guys see next week. week.